Hey, this is Son Hollow 80, and welcome to the evolution of my Mark II Sonic Screwdriver. This is going to go over some of the body work that makes, you know, the cosmetic parts of the Sonic Screwdriver. Later, I'll do a video that shows you the Arduino programs that I play with, and as well as, like, the internal slide components. Again, this is just going to go over some of the body work. A lot of you have shown interest in that. It starts with buying a 3-inch brass nipple. This one's red brass. It doesn't really matter, because I kind of file it all or sand it off, so you're going to lose the coating anyway. I've already belt sanded the threads down. You can kind of see the stripes here where the threads used to be. And then once that's belt sanded down, I take my Dremel cutoff wheel and cut that thread area in half on both sides. And that's kind of what makes the collar that'll hold the nut on eventually. Once you've cut down the threads, the next thing I do is cut the slot for the slide and I do that just by lining up the wheel and cutting just over halfway down. And it's about four, maybe five blade widths before you have enough room to slide your micro switch into. And that's how I measure it, is once my switch will slide up and down, I know I'm good. And that's all I do other than decorate the body, which I'll show you that a little later. This is the hardware, just as you buy it in the store with the hex heads. It's a half-inch flare, a half-inch reducer, and a half-inch pipe cap. The pipe cap I never did anything with. The uh, reducer gets a lot of work because there's a lot of metal there, and it's the one I shape the most. The only thing I really do with this is sand off the uh, hex head, and then it also gets the dog collar cut into it. So this is what it looks like once it's belt sanded. I try to reduce this as much as I can to get it about the size of the body so it kind of sits flush without flaring out a whole lot. You know, it'll look like it was made for it. And once you've done the belt sanding, the next part is to kind of file everything clean. This one is kind of faceted. It was just one I was playing with. But it has the dog collar cut into it. And that's done by just taking a file and, you know, cutting a plus into it and just keep cutting and keep cutting until the two fit together. So you kind of have to keep playing with it. And then sometimes one position won't line up as good as another position, so I just kind of find the perfect fit and go with that. And boom, there's the dog collar. Oh, the one thing I didn't mention is there's so much metal on the collar here for the half inch that I actually have to take the Dremel sander and kind of angle all that back going around and around until it looks something more like this and that way it gives the dog collar when the two pieces fit together it'll have like kind of an hourglass shape and you know fit together as opposed to the collar flaring out so much more and that's roughly the body parts. There's the glass beads that I've been using for the emitter. You try to, you know, you can buy a bag of these for two bucks. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just kind of pick the roundest ones and then take the emitter and I sand out the threads until the bead fits into it. And then you just put a bead of glue around it before you set that in. The other thing is the acrylic rod. That's something I get from Amazon, and I have to drill out the center. A cool thing I found is this uh, Dremel multi-use drill bit. It's not as aggressive as a drill bit, a regular drill bit, and it kind of leaves more of a flush kind of hole, which makes the uh, you know wire a lot more visible through the acrylic. I'll kind of show you the difference here in a second. Uh, the most recent model... I used the same flare and a test plug that I cut in half and that's what made the more kind of true to the prop bottom which I'll show you on the uh, Mark II B. So here it is. The original Mark II. This is kind of a prototype. It was made out of the Mark I. Now the Mark I just housed the toy electronics. As of the Mark II I started making my own electronics. So the measurements of the body on this one were to hold the, you know, toy inside. <clears throat> and uh, I was able to play with that a lot more in the future. And that's why down here I didn't 
cut the threads in half I just tapered them off and kind of the same at the top I didn't make the internal collar the piece that fits just inside the body tube long enough so it kind of hangs up like here at the bottom you can see how stubby the internal sleeve is and that internal sleeve is there just so it fits tight inside the body I didn't want to use a set screw or anything because you know you don't have screws sticking out of your sonic screwdriver what kind of sense does that make so here I'll show you the hang up here it's very very loose right here because in this space there is no internal collar to hold it tight and then once I get to this point it's hitting the collar on the very top and I have to kind of push hard to get it through but it does everything I want it to it opens and closes and I found out that yeah the design will work the top is off the mark one I just you know salvaged the mark one to make the mark two which is why it had the you know plastic radio shack top it's just a you know LED cover and you can see that the plastic here is very cloudy it has a lot of scratches from passing in and out of the body and it's really hard to see the black and green wires that are in there just because of how cloudy the inside cut is as well as the outside I wasn't real happy with the first batch of acrylic and this one really didn't get a whole lot of body decoration other than the stripe which I used a ball sander piece on that one now I have this you know circular router bit and it's what I put in the Dremel and just you know follow a straight line to kind of cut you know a little impression in there that's easy to paint and you can you know pass your thumb over it without rubbing the paint off to make the side stripe that appears on the prop so that was the prototype now we get into the mark II a this one I painted silver and didn't blue I was trying to make it look more like you know the David Tennant prop but still look you know customized I had to re-glue the switch recently and I think I put too much glue on because it's kinda really hard to push in and out right now but main difference is on the collars you can see on this one that it almost completely covers the inside and holds everything aligned to make a real smooth sliding mechanism the plat the acrylic tube on the Mark II A is the same on the original Mark II. It was real cloudy. I had to take a torch to try to get it somewhat shiny. And the inside piece, you know, is all kind of wavy. And you can see the drill bit damage on the inside. But you could kind of see the wires a little better on this one. I used black and red, like they do in the show, on the at least Christopher Eccleston version. And then this one got the glass bead top for the first time otherwise it's exactly the same the electronics are the same on this one as they are on the mark II. it's just a different sound the electronics I went over in the breakdown video and I'll kinda go over the programming in the next video and all this does is kinda you know stop everything from hitting the walls on the inside or bunching up or breaking a connection and then it also makes it you know the perfect size of the inside of the sleeve so that it works as a guide to keep everything moving inside the body the design difference on this is I was using the uh, Dremel sand wheel and kinda of carving out two grooves just rolling around the bottom to kind of try trying to make it look like the Doctor Who prop It really wasn't close enough. I, just, I, I was going to do something else. I didn't know what until I designed the most recent one. The Mark II B. This one obviously 
I use the different butt cap as opposed to going with just the standard pipe cap which looks like you know any pipe cap I took the uh, flare and that test plug to kind of make a bottom that looked a lot more like the show version without the dog collar area and the three stripes which were on the uh, black and silver sonic screwdriver I decided to use on this one I just didn't paint the grooves because I gave it a hammered paint job and it kind of like did the crackle effect down in those grooves it's really hard to see my phone isn't focusing too well and then when I did the silver green sonic I loved the way that pearl green looked with a silver background it just pops so much more and looks so much darker against silver than it did against the brass so I went with that and that's the main body difference design you can see the acrylic is a lot clearer than it was in the older models and that Dremel bit does so much better doing the channel that you can even read what's written on the wires inside and this one's also really loose fit no effort to slide it out the only problem is when I hold it upside down sometimes it'll pop out and the internal design whoops sorry about that the internal design is exactly the same I've cut you know more speaker holes in this one I was trying to make it louder but everything fits together so tightly while it's inside it's extremely muffled and then there is what I've been doing for the switch it's an eighth inch brass plate and there's a black or brass square tube that fits the gap between the body and the top of the switch the switch hole is drilled to the size of that little collar at the top of the micro switch just before the threads start that way it sits over the switch to hold everything straight this square and everything glue to the switch and I don't have the problem of the switches or the you know, thumb plate flying off anymore like I did with the original and I told you earlier that I had to re-glue this one recently it's because it's not the same design that I've been using so that has improved I feel that the bottom is improved and I kinda like the new body that I've been doing and it fits together like always slide the top in bottom fits around the battery compartment and into the body this one kinda has a sweet spot where it lines up and that's not it there it is fits together real tight slides real easy that hammered paint job is a real neat effect gives the body a lot of texture I did get some pooling along here while I was doing the channels really heavy and every now and then a dent you know a bad cut that kind of thing it just adds to the character for me like I said I really like weathered stuff and that's how quiet it is closed so it kinda has that Doppler effect where it gets louder as you slide out which is a real easy effect to do and there you have it those are the main design changes to the Mark II the evolution of the Mark II if you will